Okay, so we've left off on um, the fingers here, and I'm just going to run a quick save. Control Alt S, increment and save. And you'll see now that I have to basically begin um, combining this to the rest of the mesh. So what I'll start with here is um, I need to combine these first and foremost. Um, I'm going to shift select all of them and then I'm going to do right here this is the combine these two squares inside the circle basically combine or mesh combine either one will do the same exact thing now um, the first thing I want to do is I need to start connecting these uh, fingers and I'm gonna hold right click and go to edge I'm gonna turn off my soft select and I'm going to basically let's try to do it from this side um, I'm basically going to select this edge and shift select this one and press bridge and I'm gonna leave it with no subdivisions and you can do the same thing here now like unlike the foot <clears throat> because we didn't add a subdivision in the middle these vertices will remain as one um, so you don't have to go in and merge anything now if Maya is cooperating 100%, I'm going to try to do uh, a quick little trick. I'm going to select the first one, shift to select the second one, go back to the starting point of the bridge, and shift select the ending point, and then press bridge. It should be able to bridge that. Um, I wouldn't go too many more than that, but you have to go one, two for the first point, second point, you know, and then basically first point second point again so it knows how to bridge it together um, any more sections than this to try to do that too it starts to get confused but um, sometimes it will work so I've just bridged all those together and then I'm also gonna bridge the hand here to the thumb the, uh, the index I'll run another bridge and on this one I'm gonna add I'm gonna start with one subdivision level um, and basically just kind of give it that little curve that it has. And if at any point you do need to move anything, I would just select everything on that on the faces on there and just sort of shift it around as needed. Something like something like that. For now, will work just fine. Now, modeling the rest of this together, um, it begins to get a little uh, bit tricky because we do have quite a bit of topology in here. Um, but it does help maintain those shapes um, that we're going for. So what I would like to do next is I'm going to start by selecting the entire edge loop all the way up until the thumb here and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run an extrude on just these faces my thumb seems to be a little bit low and maybe rotate it a little bit I don't know it still seems too low something like that should be pretty good and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna get switch to my vertex mode select these two vertices and then I'll hold shift right click merge vertices to center I do the same thing on this side too. make sure you select the right one because this one is much higher for whatever reason I must have accidentally selected it select both of these merge vertices to center all right, do that one more time. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm selecting one and then holding shift and double clicking it and it's gonna select from uh, the starting point to the, the ending point. So I'll 
select one, hold shift, double click over here. It's going to know to go all the way around this way. Same thing, same thing, and there. And then I'll extrude one more time. And I can even sort of start to make some adjustments as needed. And I'm going to select the first vert, select this one. And in fact, I'm actually going to snap this one. I'm going to press W, hold V to snap to vertex, and just snap that right over there. And then merge these together. Same thing here. A soft, soften edge just to start to get a look at what it's uh, starting to be. Um, another thing you can do, you'll notice your hand starting to get a little any sort of direction you need to bring it. You know, you can go ahead and do something like this. All right. So now that we've come that far, um, really, you can begin to. Uh, I'm pretty much going to do that same process. Once to match up with this edge loop, twice to uh, closely match up with this one, and then just start to repeat that process. Do one at a time if it makes you feel more comfortable to merge the verts. Make sure you run a click and drag so you're merging all of them properly together. And once I get to about this point, um, I can pretty much start to just extrude and then obviously start to figure out a way to bring it inward. And you'll notice it looks a little funky. Not, not a great big deal of an issue. And what I'll do is I'll move the entire hand up. I even need to bring it down just a bit. You're notice I have way, way too much topology in here. Um, but one of the last things, uh, in, uh, as far as way too much topology, um, what I mean by that is I have too much topology to uh, sort of um, match up properly. But when we get into merging the hand into the arm, um, we will uh, make adjustments accordingly. Okay. So one last thing I would like to show you um, before I sort of close this out is that it looks a little weird. And <clears throat> the easiest way to fix this, there's two ways uh, really. I'll show you the first way. If I I'm just going to start it on this edge. If I highlight all of these vertices on the edge, and you can even do the uh, click one, hold shift, double click the next one right next to it, and it'll select the entire edge loop of vertices. Um, one thing I'd like to show you is, in case they're not all lined up, might as well just line them up now. But if you hold shift and right click, and you go to average vertices, you'll notice, and you can do this a couple times, you'll notice it starts to sort of round itself out and it starts to average the verts quite a bit but you'll notice that it starts to create it a little bit more circular um, as best as it can do because it's just literally averaging uh, the locations of one another um, and it should start to really nicely start to round it out as best as possible so that's one way uh, to start this sort of process. And here. Give or take something like that. And I just average vertices one more time. And we're starting to get it. Starting to get it. It's not going to be perfect, but um, as long as it's close, we're in good shape. Right? So I 
that's so far so good. Now the next thing um, I want to show you is actually I'm going to start by doing an edit, delete all by type, and history. So one of the last things I want to show you on uh, modeling here is we're going to touch base on the sculpt tool for the first time. And I'm going to hold shift and tap I just to isolate this object. And I'm going to switch to the sculpting tab. And I'm going to go ahead and click here. And you're going to notice um, it pulls it, it that wireframe on. Uh, make sure you have wireframe on shaded on. But um, you're going to notice that. And I just clicked the first tool here under sculpting. Um, you'll notice that you probably have to adjust your brush size, but definitely also uh, adjust your strength. I'm going to change mine even lower to like 0.25. Um, and even before I begin doing this, um, let me show you one more thing. The tool right next to it, so this is the sculpt tool, so we can adjust the brush size as needed. All right, we'll go to like one. One's probably a pretty good size. Um, but click on your, this is the smooth tool under sculpting tab, smooth tool. And these are all under mush, mesh tools, sculpting tools, and then you can kind of click on these as needed. You can even go into the settings individually here, but I like to do it just right here as I'm working so I can kind of take a look. You'll notice the strength on my smooth tool is at 100. You'll notice the strength on my sculpt tool is at 0.25. So holding shift uh, when I'm on my sculpt tool actually activates the smooth tool. So you'll notice it actually it'll change a color when I'm holding shift. I'm just clicking and, and kind of just going right over it. But you'll notice it starts to um, sort of soften everything out a little bit and um, the reason I bring that up is because I like using this tool but it really does a great job of it basically averages the vertices um, as you need them and now I'm just kinda sculpting in a little information and then just kinda sculpting out and softening out at, as needed but if you notice anything weird when you're holding shift make sure you check this uh, smooth tool because when you hold shift on the sculpt tool, holding shift while you having the, the sculpt tool activated, uh, activates the smooth tool. But in case uh, something doesn't look, look similar to mine, make sure uh, you check the settings uh, in the opposite tool. So my sculpt tool, I have my strength at 0.25, brush size at about 1. Um, and I'm going to hold shift again, and I'm just going to show you that I'm just really just clicking and sort of going around and I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom. And I'm, just, I'm starting with the smooth. Start to smooth all this info out. And then I'm going to bring my brush size a little bit smaller and I'll leave that one for now. But I like to have like sort of this clean smooth base before I start now I'm going to start to sculpt in a little bit. So I know in like sections like right here on the palm, it has a little bump here and then up here we got little bumps. So uh, I'm just going to, I, I believe like the less is, less is more in this kind of situation uh, because if I have the strength too high, um, as you may, may experience, um, you'll notice drastic changes right away. Um, just make sure you save and undo as needed. And then that might be too much. So we're just going to go and soften that out a little bit. And I'm just basically trying to get using the sculpt tool, just the basic overall look of what a hand shape sort of has to it. And then it does sort of concave in here, but it also does have a little info in here. Doesn't need to be perfect. Um, but just a little bit of info to kind of differentiate it and give it a little bit more overall feel to a hand. And then also on the top, so I started to just smooth this out. You know, you've got like your knuckles right in here. So I'll just using my sculpt tool add a little bit more and a little bit more. Right, 
it might be too much, but then I'll just hit it with the soft, uh, or the I'll switch to my smooth and start to give it not too much uh, information or too much exaggeration in here. And then I'm just going to add a little bit in here for like the muscle and skin and stuff like that uh, to give it more of a higher quality look of the hand. And having this extra geometry um, really helps sort of get the shape right um, in this particular case. And it all depends on the character's hands themselves also. Alright, so I don't want to go too much on the edge because you notice it really, really does do some kind of funky stuff there. And let's grab my sculpt tool one more time. Just trying to do it a little bit softer. I think that's a pretty good start. And what I'm going to do here on the edge of the hand is I'm going to scale these in. And, you know, maybe I even need one more uh, edge loop in here to sort of switch back to my sculpt tool to sort of get bring this all together, make it a little bit more accurate. I'm just softening it out a little bit here. Something like so. So it's not perfect, but it does resemble a hand. And hands are really hard to model. They really, really are. And um, let's get that in there a little bit. Something like that will work. Okay, maybe it comes in a little bit more here. And just take a look at your hand while you're doing it just to see um, you know, what you're going for. But it doesn't need to be perfect at all. Anyway, last thing I'm going to do is hold shift right click and do soften edge and soften edge. I'm even going to turn on, turn off my wireframe on shaded because I feel like you get a slightly better look to it. And I think it's pretty close. Uh, to what I am going for and at some point maybe a little bit I need a little bit of tweaking but for the most part it's pretty good um, so for now sort of like this glove um, when I finally combine it I might actually delete this entire edge loop but for now I'm going to keep it in there um, but when we get to combining the hand into the mesh, um, we uh, will start to make a little bit more adjustments to the topology um, to match it closely and make it easier to combine and merge vertices later. Um, one last thing I like to do is I'm going to modify freeze transformations. I'm going to uh, hold D in V in this case because I'm just going to snap it to the vert. I know this vert's directly in the center. And then I'm going to scale it at negative 1. And now I've got the start to my character. Uh, the hands anyway are starting to really pull this um, entire character together. So um, anyway, the hands might need a little adjusting as far as scale and things like that, but right now it's, it's working. Um, and we've just completed modeling the hands. Now, this may take you uh, some time to do. Um, it is a difficult uh, thing to model, one of the more difficult ones to get to look um, right. Um, I mean, probably the only thing that's more difficult to get looking right is the face. Um, but we'll cover how to do that um, in the future here, uh, sooner than later. Um, but if you do have any questions, be sure to shoot me a message. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, thank you for watching.